So we've got two more SSDs from NetTech. You might have not heard of that company before, but these are the second set of their SSDs and they look very similar to these ones here. These are NV7000T, come without the heatsink, and these are NV7000. Now these have DRAM cache instead of these that don't. So how do these compare to some of the other drives that you might have heard before? Let's find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So let's take a look at some of the specifications. Firstly, these come only with a heatsink. There is is no not heatsink version available as far as I know and looking at the one terabyte and two terabyte model I can see that there is chips on both sides it is PCIe Gen 4 x4 SSD but the heatsink might be something that depending on your use case might put you off but sometimes is a benefit as well for example if you want to use it for your PS5 or something like that these SSDs come in one two and four terabytes in sizes and they have DRAM cache one gigabyte per terabyte let's take a look at some of the benchmarks now firstly the sequential read and write speeds which have been done on crystal disk mark which is kind of synthetic but still shows how much we can actually write on the drive maximum when it's sequential. On the sequential reads test, the NV7000 one terabyte model is right on the top there with uh, solid IMP44 Pro and Lexar NM800 Pro and passes 7,100 megabytes per second. So right on the top there. Interestingly, the NV7000 two terabyte model is a few percent slower. I'm not saying it's, you know, a lot slower, but as you can see, all of the, from Samsung 980 Pro to the top of the chart, it's very, very similar speeds, but it is slower which is interesting. Usually a higher capacity drives are a little bit faster in read and writes, but also the NV7000T, these drives there, which didn't have DRAM, are actually performing better than the NV7000 two terabyte drive. Now I did it many times and I was still seeing the same result, which is just interesting. Moving on to write speeds. Here we see that the two terabyte model and one terabyte model now are swapped and they perform like they're supposed to be performing. That the write speed on the bigger capacity drive, like the two terabyte drive is faster than the one terabyte drive. The two terabyte drive is in the top four there, quite fast, top of the charts, just a little bit slower, 2% slower than the 5Q to 530, which is very, very impressive. And as you can see, it is a few percent better than the NV7000T, the non DRAM cache drive, which helps with the sequential write speeds, as you can see. And then the one terabyte NV7000 is right on the bottom of the charts, interestingly, performing uh, quite a bit worse than the NV7000T one terabyte drive. So the DRAM less drive again here for one terabyte performs better. Now these are just synthetic read and write speeds. Let's move on to more real world performance where we see which drives are good for certain use cases. And if you haven't seen my creator guide for which SSD to get for your system, which one is operating, which one is project drive, which one is cache drive, which one is archive drive and so on, then I highly recommend you check that out. But firstly, we're going to be looking at PC Mark 10 Quick System Benchmark, which tests these SSDs not as intensively, but just the light use or something that you would usually do on a secondary SSD, for example, in a laptop where you store some files like photos, videos, documents, and you're opening, closing and working with these. So drives that perform well in this test are good for secondary, the drive that you're just looking into a PC to expand storage, but you're not running the operating system on. We can see that the NV7000 two terabyte and one terabyte are performing right in the middle of the pack there, just a little bit slower than the Solid MP41 Plus, and faster than the NV7000T, which are the DRAM 
less drives, which is what we'd like to see. The Lexar NM800 Pro, which is kind of like the closest competitor with this because it has the heatsink and it's got DRAM there as well, is performing a little bit faster there, a few percent faster than these NV7000s. Moving on to PCMark 10 Data Drive Benchmark. And this drive tests these drives as a storage drive, really, where you're storing a lot of files and you're not working with the files so actively but rather just storing the files and like writing a bit more and then not as much reading for example or things like that so drives that do well in this test are better for archive drives for example looking at the results the nv7000 one and two terabyte model are just right next to each other and they're performing better than the dram less drives which is better and that's what we should expect because when you've got dram it just helps with some of the read and write speeds especially write speeds but interestingly the two terabyte model isn't that much faster than the one terabyte model and if we're looking at the lexar nm800 pro one terabyte drive there then that drive is a little bit faster than this one here which comes with the heatsink as well so here we're just kind of mid-range ssd again with dram moving on to pc mark 10 full system drive benchmark which tests the drive as an operating system drive so when you're actively working with either software or operating system on the drive that constantly needs to rewrite and read lots of little files all over the place and actively working with the drive so drives that do well in this test are very good for operating system drives or sometimes project drives but when project looking at the project drive as a creator then i highly recommend checking out the consistency test as well where we're doing a little bit more like writing and reading a uh, big you know files so here we can see that the nv7000 is actually performing in the bottom half of the benchmarks and interestingly the dram less drives the nv7000 t drives are actually performing better the one terabyte the best than the two terabyte of the DRAM less drive and then we've got these NV7000 one terabyte and then two terabyte which is kind of surprising and I don't know why this is could be because of the difference of the controllers or somehow how these drives are done but this is interesting why we want to make these tests and want to test these benchmarks because sometimes reading the specs from the paper mean one thing but when you're actually testing this in real world use what you know replicates how you use the drive these drives are a little bit worse in this test than these ones so if you're looking for an operating system drive probably go for these ones not these ones but i guess it does make kind of sense as well if they put a heatsink on it making it more like a you know ps5 drive or drive where you just want to plug in and have expanded storage but just interesting results now moving on to our last test which is pc mark 10 consistency test and what this test does is absolutely test the drive to the maximum in read and write speeds it writes over 23 terabytes of files on it fills the drive over three times and the test runs for about 20 hours this is absolutely like the drive will go every single drive of that i've tested goes to like 100 degrees and is really like to the absolute limits and what this test does is just seeing how well does the drive sustain the read and write speeds in absolute maximum loads now this probably isn't for 95 percent of the people but there are some creators and some use cases where the absolute maximum consistency of the drive is important and that's why we're looking at this test also that seemed like a very fast car that drove past also drives that perform well in this test are good for project drives because you're working if as a creator you're working with large assets for example you have big video files or 3d files or photos or something like that and you're constantly working with them so to sustain the very high speed is is very important this but i would kind of look at both of these benchmarks like the consistency test and the full system benchmark test in conjunction with each other because then you really see which one is good for the project drive if that makes sense so looking at the nv7000 now the two terabyte drive performs very very well right in the top half of the pack 
and just a little bit below the Solidime P44 Pro, which is absolutely incredible uh, drive. And we're performing faster than the Lexar NM790 and a lot faster than the Lexar NM800 Pro, which is pretty much half the speed of what we're getting on this NetAc NV7000 drive. And the one terabyte here is actually a little bit slower than the DRAM less drives, the one and two terabyte drive, which is interesting. I would have expected the one terabyte with DRAM to be formed better than the one without DRAM because that just helps with like the consistent read and write speeds. But the two terabyte drive is very, very impressive in here. So perhaps quite a good drive for when you have large assets and want to have very consistent drive performance, then that performs very well. Now terabyte written spec means how many times you can rewrite each one of those cells in the SSD, how many times can you fill them and empty them because those cells don't last forever if that makes sense. Now each company usually gives five years of warranty but different terabyte written spec which means that over the next five years you can write certain amount of data on this that will be warranted and the higher the terabyte written spec the more it means that it is good to write big files on it and it can sustain kind of that the, the stronger the cells in uh, another way if that makes sense so the industry standard what samsung and western digital what you usually see is 600 terabytes per one terabyte and if you go to two terabyte because it's larger capacity it is 1200 terabytes per two terabyte but it usually works out averages 600 terabytes that's like the the bar basically if anything above that's very good anything below i'd kind of think hmm the there's something you know maybe an issue so looking at the nv7000 here the terabyte written spec is actually very very impressive you can see for one terabyte it's 700 two terabytes it's 1400 and for four terabytes is even more than 700 terabytes per terabyte it's 3000 terabytes written which is very very impressive which is a little bit less than the kc 3000 4 terabyte drive and as you can see it's quite a bit more than the samsung um or the industry standard drives there the samsung 980 pro 990 pro where we have two 2400 terabytes written per four terabyte so the terabyte written spec is actually quite impressive and beats out some of the competitors there so i'm liking that so in conclusion are these drives worth buying and i'd say yes and no it depends what you are doing and it depends what the prices for these are i highly recommend checking out the price in the description below because with ssds I'll give you the performance here, but at the time when I'm making this, the price might be very low or very high. And depending on the price, whatever you're getting these things, then that's the deal breaker for you. If you find these on a good deal and you're looking at the stats here saying, look, I'm getting these much better than the Samsung drives, for example, I'm getting them much better than the Lexo drives, let's go for them. But if these are more expensive than some of the drives that perform less, for example, then that's not worth buying. Hope this makes sense there, but they're in no means bad drives, like at all. And at the right price point, definitely do make sense. Bear in mind with the heatsink though, and with your motherboard, depending where you're gonna be putting them, if these drives go directly underneath the GPU, they might not fit, sometimes they do fit, but just bear in mind when you're gonna be fitting them that these do come with the heatsinks and you'll have to fit them somehow or somewhere. It's not gonna be a problem in all of the cases, but sometimes it is. For the best price, check these drives out in the description below. Also, if you want to build yourself the best bank for a creator PC, then there are links in the description below for build guides, which PC to build and which parts to use. So you don't lose out on any of the performance or you buy a part that's actually more expensive that doesn't give you any performance. Everything's explained there. They're completely free. I just highly recommend you check them out to save some money and get the best performance for you as a creator. One last note here is that this video is sponsored by NetHack, but they didn't have any impact or influence on the video. They were charged a fee for basically 
basically scheduling because I said I'm quite busy right now I can't make the review but they were insisting that look we really want the review out there so I said okay we'll charge this one but you can't influence their video if that makes sense so it kind of is sponsored by NetHack but they didn't influence the video if that makes sense these are all my numbers just wanted to be upfront with you thanks guys for watching bye bye